I've done martial arts since I was four, and I always heard that, this theory that you could use martial arts as self-defense. I've never actually seen it in a real fight done so effectively as Hoist Gracie in, in UFC 1. So basically I saw that and I was hooked. Before I'd finished college, I had already done a few fights. And uh, when I finished college, that's when I went, opened up my first full-time gym. Well, when I started doing MMA, it, was, it wasn't in Ireland, so it wasn't like I could go to a gym. So it was kind of just watching early UFCs, pause, rewind. It was a very slow learning process. Now when I look, because of the systems we have in place, when someone joins, within six months, they have the ability that took me six years. Because we, were, we were blind men fumbling in a dark room, whereas now they have, all, all my coaches here are very high level and can, can, can give people the best information right away. I had started training MMA when I was living in the States and then I came home and I took it up in a local club I found and I decided that I wanted to you know, go professional and I, uh, I looked up the kind of best coaches around and I found John Cavan's name kept popping up so. When I finished playing my last sport I decided I wanted to do something sort of different just to keep training as well. I've done a wee bit of research on it, I heard that BGG was one of the best sports um, or martial arts that there was and I heard John Cavan was the best that there was. So. He's a very humble fella, um, very easy to get on with, fantastic coach, and we became friends almost straight away. Like. John's a very analytical uh, teacher, a coach. He breaks things down, makes complex things seem simple. It would actually remind you of a maths teacher, and funny enough, John said that if coaching didn't go the way it did with him, he probably would have become a maths teacher. He has an engineering degree, so. MMA is a controversial sport um, it, it, it attracts some journalists that want to say something negative about it. I would say that all sport played at a professional level is dangerous. Like there's almost 500 people in this gym, maybe 15 are doing it at that high level. The rest are doing it like the class that's just finishing up behind us here. They're just doing it for general fitness, general health and for them it's no more dangerous than any other sport you're going to do. If you're playing soccer at the weekend you can get knocked over, twist your ankle and that's the, that's the most severe injuries we'd have at that level. At the professional level, the extreme level, Connor's level, yes there is, there is certainly danger of taking blows to the head and uh, my recommendation would always be to my fighters that you need to make as much money as possible in the professional fighting game and then, and then get out, uh, get out while you still can. Martial arts as a lifestyle, I would see them doing that forever. The next step for, for John and, and the gym is just more guys in the UFC, more guys you know, coming up through the ranks. There's, there's a big stable of fighters here, there's a lot of talented guys with, with big futures. And you know, It's just the tip of the iceberg now, it's just myself, Connor, Paddy, Gunny in the UFC now, but there's a lot, a lot of guys following our footsteps. You know, we've got some great fighters in the gym there at the moment, like, but uh, there's great morale in the gym, you know, it, it keeps growing. Um, but I think that's more to do with the culture that he set within the gym. And I think you know, the bar is going to continue to rise. And, as it does, I think John will continue to rise with it. I've found that if I just do the best I can in every moment I have, the future looks after itself. Things will start slotting into place. So that's, that's my approach to these things. I'm always learning with Jiu-Jitsu. It's, it's an ongoing process. I'll be, I'll be a student of the game until I'm, uh, until I'm dead, like, you know?